Hello, what is going on? Coach of the Pittsburgh Pichus, I am Num Nexus, bringing you week six. A very difficult week it's going to be against the Durham Tardigans, Leo, six foot hacks. Uh, he managed to end up defeating Miguel, who beat Joey, who's the champion of the UCL and overall an amazing battler. And Miguel himself uh, is also an amazing battler, which for some reason a lot of people, like I guess, weren't aware, but I feel like him defeating Joey made a lot of people be more apparent of how amazing he is in this format. I mean, he's. He's one of the greatest battlers I've seen in this format, and just in general. And then we got Leo, who, if you guys didn't see the match in either one of the channels or the sides, I, I immediately think that you should. It was an insane match. Leo was reading him like a book. It was disgusting. You know, they both played They both played well. Leo actually ended up defeating him, and now it's kind of where the pressure is on me. Being the same record as Leo, we're all tied for first. Me, Miguel, Joey, Leo, Nappy, and Jay. So we're all tied for first, so like a five-way tie for first, and after this week, I don't think there will be a five-way tie because someone's going to have to lose, because me and Leo, who are also tied for first, are fighting this week, and I, it, it, I'm confident, but at the same time, I hope that I execute things right, because I'm confident in team building, but it's the thing of execution, because you can team build great, but if you can't execute the team, well then, I don't know. Like, for example, David and Twit have amazing teams, yet I don't think their execution is the world's greatest, because if you look at the record, they kind of said otherwise, you know, it's not even being mean, I love them, they're my black brothers, my black brothers, but... <clears throat> you know, that's just a good example I wanted to point out, but... We're fighting Leo this week, <clears throat> and I, uh... He has a very threatening team. Like, I'm saying this now, he has the best draft of UCL Season 2. He has the best draft. He has the best draft. Like, Joey's draft is good, but Leo has the best draft. Like, his team, it's, it's just the best team. When you have Clefable maxed in with two nukes, Victini and Terrakion, and then amazing walls, uh, Blastoise, Registeel, Shaman, and then an amazing Firewater Grass Core, Victini, Blastoise, Mega, and Shaman, <clears throat> that's absurd. So... I didn't write down all of his team. I guess I'm just going to talk to you about some of the threats. I guess I kind of did, but I'm going to talk to you guys about the threats. All right, so here's his team. I put Tarakian on here twice because that's how scary he is. Um, essentially, here's what I'm actually expecting him to bring like with this stuff. Like, This is literally called Choose Sack because this shit kills me with every single turn if I... I he, he's definitely going to bring it, though. He's definitely going to bring it. It was luckily enough, though, with me, my Lopity does outspeed it. You know, unfortunately, I had to go Jolly this week. I wanted to go Adamant, but it looks like I'm going to have to go Jolly this week. I outspeed it with one point, and I put in the rest in HP, and then the rest in attack, of course. I have Iron Tail this week for the Clefable, because if you guys don't know, Clefable 6-0 is my team. Uh, it's not even my team that I brought. My entire draft. Look at it. If Clefable sets up two Calm Minds, or just one, like, what, what's good here? What, what, what's a really good here? Like, Specs, Flash Cannon, Roar... Uh, gunk shot. For some reason, I thought Kecleon learns gunk shot, but he doesn't. Why? He should be able to learn gunk shot, man. Kecleon's literally his best move. I had to put in a uh, Iron Tail for Kecleon as well, which, yeah, because Kecleon is just his move pool needs to be better. I swear it needs to be better. He's such a good ability. His move pool needs to be better. But yeah, that's the. I have to bring Iron Tail because res of right now this. Clefable is doing work. He basically takes my hit. That's the thing about how you defeat Lopini, right? Is you have a Mon that's bulky enough for you have a Mon that can do a lot of chip damage to it. Like Leo's Dredagon. I know for a 100% fact that he is bringing Dredagon. You know, this is what I expected him to bring. Um, but then I guess one that I maybe could not see is Registeel because he already has Blastoise to stop my uh, Zoomerl. So maybe Registeel could be slapped on over with Dredagon. I actually could see that. If instead of Dredagon, uh, instead of Registeel with Dredagon, because Registeel is kind of setup fodder for me as well, I can get a, uh, a Belly Drum off, he doesn't run Explosion, you know, I, if you, you know, predicts me to go for like Super Power and a Bandit, and he goes for Counter, I could Belly in the Counter or something like that, so honestly, like Thunder Waves, Rocks, I, he's kind of setup fodder, so that's exactly why I don't think that he'll bring um, the Registeel, but I could see it over the, you know, definitely see Registeel over Dredagon. Or Dredagon over Registeel, so I guess it's the only change. Otherwise, I'm pretty confident he'll bring all of this stuff too. Um, I know even though I have an Azumarill, Victini, Choice Bandit, I literally don't have a switch in. Um, my lack of walls, or the walls that I have, are not the world's most bulkiest, so they kind of fall. You know, they kind of fall to it, but uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a hyper offensive versus hyper offensive. Essentially, it's going to be, I really feel like it's going to happen, but Leo's bulk is better than mine. You know, my uh, Pylo, my Fortress, compared to like his Clef, and Mega Blastoise, Shaman, Registeel, so. It's 
it's gonna be interesting. I have to bring Iron Tail though, because Iron Tail is like 61 min, so it's guaranteed doing over half min. So it is a guaranteed 2 KO, and it's like 75, 80 max. Um, if he's the standard defensive set like this, or this is not really the standard. Usually they go like 176 or something like that, or 172. And they put like 80, 84, 86, some shit in there. They literally do this sometimes, so. I don't know. Well, they wouldn't do that because Magic Guard, but I don't know. Essentially, is it, max HP, max defense, you know, because it's draft format. You know, you're not supposed to. You can, but you can run other things that are unpeculiar. So I just did that just to see my max output if he wanted to do that. And if it does any more than that, then he's not max HP, max defense. He'd probably have like a lot of defense investments, but not fully max defensive, you know? Um, so I have to bring Iron Tail because he resists uh, high jump kick and frustration. Well, that's a free Thunder Wave for him. So. That's going to be picky. I'm bringing the choice band to the zoom roll this week because looking at his team, if you see his draft, like outside of the Reggie steal, not even Skun Tank, like because he's neutral to it, uh, no one on his entire draft really comes in. <clears throat> and just in case, let me open up his draft in a uh, pick an image because I know that I, I know that I forgot one. So let me just zoom in here. Um, what am I forgetting? Your decision lift. Sigilyph, so I'll put in Sigilyph here. Yeah, I speed creep the Terrakion as well, so I guess I won't, but there's Sigilyph that I may be forgetting that's not on here. Um, essentially, this team is Clef, Victini, Terrakion, Mega Blastoise, Crook, so I didn't put Crook on here either because I just don't think 100% he's going to bring Crook. I have an Azumarill, I have a Diversion, I have a Zapdos, I have a Lopini. I just don't see a reason for him bringing Crook, you know? Uh, Shaman, Regiseal, Dredagon, Sigilyph. Skun Tank, Swallow, and Zebstrika, which also I, I could see Zebstrika as well, because it kind of walls my Zapdos and destroys my two water types, but otherwise it's shafted by everybody else on my team, so that's a 50-50 one if he wants to bring that or not. I could see it, but then I couldn't see it. It's like on the maybe list, you know? <clears throat> but essentially, uh, his entire draft, if you're looking at it right now, the only mod that really comes in on a choice banded play rough, like really is just the Registeel. Like, nobody else on his team will appreciate a choice bandit player. Like, essentially, is 2 KO on everybody. I don't know about Blastoise. Uh, we could run a quick calc on Blastoise. But, you know, outside of that, everybody else, everybody else. What the? Everybody else, it essentially just one shots, you know? So, if we run a quick calc on that for Blastoise, we do choice bandit to zoom room. And we're scrolling down and we're doing defensive spinner. That's still doing almost half minimum. So, no one on his team is gonna appreciate a banded uh, play rough. So that's exactly why I decided to bring it banded. I didn't bring belly drum just because of the fact that <clears throat> uh, it's gonna be difficult for me to set up the belly drum when he has all of these uh, bulky ass mons, as well as he has unaware Clefable. So I gotta watch out for unaware Clefable as well because unaware Clefable, he's more than likely going to bring because Belly Drum Azumarill shafts his team because if I do run Belly Drum Azumarill, it can literally dent the hole throughout his team. It kills his offensive mons, Victini and Terrakion. Uh, plus six Azumarill. And if we take off the band, uh, player if is one shotting Blastoise. Mega Blastoise is a defensive one, if you look at that. Uh, even Shaman, if he decided to do some weird ass Shaman set, where he actually might even bring this Shaman set uh, just to stop my Azumarill. Yeah, even that gets one-shotted. So, but I mean, look at that with no investments. Let me take up the life orb. With no investments, C Flare almost one-shots because C Flare is just such a powerful stab move. But essentially, um, and then all, on the Registeel as well, I can just, you know, just go for a superpower and one-shot. Or even Waterfall. So essentially, if I do set up a Belly Drum, it kills everything on his team in one shot. Which. Knowing Leo, because I know Leo's a really good battler, he will grab that opportunity to bring Unaware Clefable purely for the fact that, you know, he doesn't want to get swept by this Azumarill, you know? So I'm almost positive he's going to bring Unaware Clef. If not, then I think my instincts will scream to me that he's not unaware. And that he'll actually be Magic Guard. I don't know what it is about me. Like, watch me set up. Watch me set up on, like... The Clefable. I'm telling you right now. Watch me set up on the Clefable with either Zumeril or Verusion because this is a Swords Dance of Verusion, which I actually should change this to Stone Edge. But watch me set up on one of these guys on the Clefable and watch that happen. Watch Leo just like be like, I should have brought Unaware because a part of me also feels like Leo won't bring Unaware either. So, but he should. He should. 
So, uh, Zoom Roll is, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You know, max speed, of course, max HP. I mean, max attack, and then four and special defense, because I'm already out of mount and HP. Um, really good thing, outspeeds everything. He could speed creep my Zoom Roll with the Clef. Um, he could also speed creep it with the Dredagon, just like this. Like, this is actually the Dredagon that I see coming. This spread right here. This is the Dredagon that I deadass see. Like, I actually see this exact same Dredagon set being brought. I mean, it's even even he could go, even go adamant right here and try and put in enough investment to where he needs to outspeed my Azumarill because 102. So, no. No. He needs to be jolly. Essentially, he needs to be jolly and he would need to be at like 204 or some shit like that. That's why, that's why I straight up just think that, you know, this is Leo's Dread set. He could either put in an attack or either put in a defense, but knowing him, he'll probably put in a defense because he's more of a... He likes bulk. Leo's been well known for a long time in the competitive community for liking bulk. He likes bulk, he likes stall, he likes defensive mons, but at the same time, he likes running all these very fat defensive mons with some nukes, you know, because these nukes then can be contrasted with these defensive mons and they can be very safe, essentially. So, yeah. He, I'm more than likely thinking that he's going to do that with like the Rocky Helmet set because that's also a really good way. It's a good check, not a counter, because the check is something that can handle insert X Mon here. A counter is something that completely stops this Mon here. So, which, Dredagon, sure, he may not be able to take Lopini's hits well uh, with High Zone Kick, Frustration, and Ice Punch, but it's doing damage to the Lopini. Like, he's chipping it down to where you could probably run like a baited quick attack from Terrakion or like a scarfed close combat from Terrakion or something like that, or hell, even a scarfed Victini. Which, he doesn't even need the chip damage off for the Scarfing team to kill off my Lopini, because if you look at it, Lopini doesn't have the world's greatest defense. Actually, 90 in both is really not that bad, but it's HP that makes it linger, so. Powerful Revenge Killer, so. I gotta watch out for that, but I am bringing the Vruzion as well. First time I'm bringing it this week, so I'm calling it Kelly. I am calling it Kelly. Shout out to the boy Kelly. <laughs> and uh, I felt like bringing this uh, Vruzion this week, because if you look at his team... Uh, I'm guaranteed to take a Moon Blast, so if he's for some reason not unaware, I can get a free SD on it. Uh, the only thing that's really scary to it is the, you know, of course, the Victini. His, his uh, Pixies are scary to it. The Victini, the Shaman, with Dazzling Gleam, Air Slash, even uh, Psychic. Um, but essentially, it can stop the Banded Crook. I mean, the Banded Crook, yep, Banded Crook, Scarf Crook. Uh, it can stop Registeel. It can stop the Dredagon, you know, of course, because it murders it. It also can stop Zeb Striker, because once he uses an overheat on somebody, for example, then I can just easily come out into the Verzion and get a free SD on it, because then he can't do anything to me with that minus two special attack. Uh, he could run Thunder Wave on it if you really wanted to be that guy, but again, just not really too worried about that. Um, so Victini is a big threat to it. Um, other things that could be annoying, like Bandit's close combat from Terrakion, Ice Beam from Mega Blastoise, you know, but. Otherwise, Victini really is the only threat to it, so if he doesn't bring Victini, I should be okay. Like, if the water types really fear him that much, because Zoomerill does body his entire draft, then, you know, he may not bring Victini just because of that fact, and he might bring somebody else, you know? Like, maybe Skuntang for Aftermath or something like that, or... Yeah. Oh, even more, <clears throat> even more of the Dredagon being brought, you know, to get that chip damage off another Zoomerill, to get the hazard chip damage, status inflictment, something like that, just a Leo type of thing, you know? So... If I get a Swords Dance up, essentially, this thing is 2 KOing everything. Uh, well, not, I, well, I don't know about the Shaman. You can do a quick calc here right now and find out if he is 2 KOing the Shaman, but... Uh, I'm almost positive that it is. Like, I'm legitimately almost positive that it is, so... Yeah, we're gonna look that up right now. I highly doubt that he will bring... Like, a, just a pure physically defensive. I feel like it'll be like just a bulky offensive Shaman, you know? Once I get plus 2 up, close combat doesn't even one shot. So... Shaman is scary. <laughs> Shaman is scary. And I think the only thing, not even Air Slash one-shots one me, and it is times four. So, yeet. <laughs> so it seems like I could just go for another one, but after close combat, you do get that minus one special defense, which it still doesn't even one-shot me, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah. So Shaman, I guess Shaman is, if you're looking at the damage output that Shaman's really doing to me, I guess Shaman, I really shouldn't be that worried of Shaman. If anything, I could probably set up on Shaman. You know, so that's the thing as well, because you know, outside of these offensive moves, Shaman really can't do anything to the Verizion because he can't leech seed it, he can't sun sport for some reason if it doesn't sun sport, and if it doesn't, why not? <laughs> uh, I love hearing people think sun sport isn't competitive, like Amoongus and Wimsicott don't exist. <laughs> 
Like when freaking everyone's talking about Alolan Mirwak not being able to be paralyzed off topic, they're like, oh, you can't paralyze him because lightning run, you can't burn him because fire type. I'm like, stun sport. <clears throat> not competitive. I'm like, you just don't know mods. But yeah, this version is essentially GB denting uh, his team as well. Basically, I have to bring dents within his team. So he has such a bulky team. Uh, it was a very bulky offensive team, I should say. He has the best bulk offense probably in this draft because Joey's is just like 95% bulk with three deadly ass OU mons. So, um, yeah, Joey's, I mean, uh, freaking Leo's bulky offensive team is going to be pretty threatening, but I feel like with the Life Orb, Sora's Dance, Virzion, and the Banded Azumarill, that I should be able to be denting a massive hole within his team. I have this uh, Zapdos as well. I put on max special defense with Timid just to outspeed a few things, but yeah, I put Timid. What did I speed creep on this thing? Is it an example? What did I speed creep on? Okay, I speed creep something. 159. Was it this Herakion? No. I uh, honestly, honestly, at this, I think I speed crept. Uh, yeah, I speed creeped Adamant. Uh, Victini, if he wants to do that, I am faster than it. It was something else that I just, cause I delete my shits all the time, so I can't remember. But yeah, I sped crept, guys. So like, take that into consideration. I sped crept, okay? I sped crept on something. I just can't remember what, but I I, I deleted a lot of shits. I guess I could tell you that, cause I I built a lot. So I, I sped crypted for something, but at this very given moment, I top of my head, I don't know. Hell, maybe is it like adamant? No, it's not because Adamant actually outspeeds me by one point spot on. So, um, I actually might change that maybe to be able to outspeed uh, Adamant. But nah, I shouldn't be too worried about that because even if he is banned, I'll just kind of work around it to where I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just kind of I'll just kind of work around it. I'll just kind of work around it. For now, we got the Zapdos though. I can roar out the Calm Mind Clefable if he wants to set up any Calm Minds. For some reason, he wants to bring Cosmic Power. Sigil lift, then I can just roar that thing out. You know, maybe like some sub SD. Terrakion roar does go through sub. Um, if I have like rock stuff, for example, which I don't even bring rocks on his team um, or anybody, I have absolutely no hazard control in his team, which is gonna bite me in the ass in the long run. But I'm pretty confident within not bringing any hazard control. Um, I think I brought no hazard control as well to Twit when he had the Charizard X, which most times he should bring hazard control to that, and I did. I did okay, I still won that match, so I'm pretty confident not bringing any hazard control because I don't want to get 6 still by Clefable because if you guys don't know, Clefable, first off, is one of the best OU mons, that's one. Two, one of the best typings in the meta. Three, one of the best fairies in the meta. Like, it's just, it's a threat, alright? And when you have my team that just gets, like, the top two right here, just shafted, look at this. There's a plus one moon blast. Who am I coming out into right now to take this? Uh, this lantern, which really can't do much back to it. It's Hydreigon, he's times four, no. There's a uh, Hoopa, which I know could take a plus one, but I have half the gunk shot. So it have to be a combination of Hoopa to chip it down. But essentially, if you're not chipping down Clefable, or I, I need what basically what I need to do is I need to have prior damage off on this Clefable in order for me uh, to be able to kill off this Clefable because Clefable is going to be very annoying to fight through this entire match. I just hope I don't miss Iron Tails on this Clefable, or I might really, really really be fucked if I don't bring any Iron Tails. Or not not bringing Iron Tails, missing Iron Tails. So I have the Volt Switch as well, just for initiative roost to gain HP back. If he decides to lock himself into close combat on the Terrakion if he's banned or scarfed. Or if he decides to lock himself into like Zen Headbutt on the Big Teeny, will I get a free roost, you know? Or if he decides to lock himself into Earthquake on the Crook, well then I get a free roost, you know? But then he might predict that on some Leo shit, but... Ah, he won't, he won't. Or just roosting on the uh, Shaman as well, which I essentially just hard wall this Shaman. Essentially, I hard wall the Shaman. Um, I can take Moonblast a lot better with this special defensive Zapdos set. Um, basically, special offensive Mons should be able to handle pretty well. A uh, Substrika as well, I should be able to handle with this spread. And, and like as well as a Sigil Leaf, because I can roar it out and Voltage some super effective stabs. So essentially, these four are special threats. I gotta watch out for it. If you bring special Teeny as well, like Elsa can kind of handle that. Um, so that's one thing. I'm bringing Hidden Pirates as well, for like, because I know that he's bringing this Redagon. Um, I know that he's bringing this Shaman. I know, because it's a gut, dude. I know that he is. Um, and with this Zapdos spread, I really don't touch Registeel, which sucks. But I'm just going to have to Voltage that into the version, which can actually handle Registeel easily when I want. So they're both in the same tier. And I am pretty proficient in the RU tier. 
um, I know what to do around that. So next up, we're going to bring the Kecleon, another weaker, another free week. I already gave him his name, too. His name is LeBron James. LeBron James. I love boy LeBron James. Cavalier, the Cavs. But, uh, yeah, I'm bringing him. I initially had Gunk Shot over this, and I was like, why is this not being worked out? Like, why is this not working? And I was like, oh, shit, he can't learn Gunk Shot. I'm like, why? That is so stupid that he can't learn Gunk Shot. Like, he's a chameleon. Come on now. But... I'm gonna have to work with the Iron Tail. I wish he learned Gung Shot. Gen 7, please move Tudor and give him Gung Shot. Cause it sucks that his best fairy killing move is Iron Tail. And it would be so amazing on him too because he has the protein ability, which was the Greninja banned to Uber's ability and made Greninja so good, one of the best starters, because of this ability. It basically makes it to where they can go for a move and they change into that move's type. The opposite of color change, where if you go for a move on Kecleon, he will become that move that moves type but if he goes for the move himself he will become that moves type it's protein i think it really should have been on kecleon and i'm glad that they put it on kecleon but i think kecleon is also really good in draft format as well because of this ability and because of how wide his move pool is but the fact that he just can't learn gunk shot uh, he's not a reliable fairy killer you know i'd have to run like hidden power of steel or hidden power of poison because uh, uh, iron tail will kill off fairies and will do a mass amount of damage because if you look at this here if you look at this here, right, and I, for example, put in Iron Tail. Let's put that in right now, okay? And if I were to go into Clefable, and I gotta bring it down to 50. Sorry if I didn't bring it down to 50 before. Iron Tail to 75 to 90. But if for hypothetically, he had Gunk Shot, Gunk Shot does 92 to 107, so it almost kills. That's why I would rather have the Gunk Shot than, because it's a base 120 stab poison move. It'll become stab because anything he wants to do is become stab. That's why he's so good. Stab is so good in Pokemon. It's just good. All right, it's a good thing. Stab is always nice. That's why your hidden power ice doesn't kill. <laughs> That's why your hidden power ice some or your hidden power electric doesn't kill Keldy or Azumarill. <laughs> it's shit like that, you know. I don't know why they nerfed hidden power ice. I don't know why. Or they just nerfed Hidden Power overall from base 70 to base 60 in Generation 6. But I'm going to have to rock out with Iron Tail. Still does a considerable amount of damage. And you can see from the Moonblast, um, I'm eating that even at like plus 3. I'm still eating that. So this Kecleon is such a good check. Not a counter, but a good check to this Moonblast. Because he can just keep setting up Moonblast and keep soft building up. But you know, until I get the defense drop. Because what's nice about it is it lowers the target defense by 1. So I need to preserve this Kecleon. I really need to preserve this Kecleon, like I really do, because he does work, you know, he does a lot of work, he has priority, two priority moves that I can swap into, I just have to watch it for Sucker Punch so I don't like, you know, allow him to set up with something on Sucker Punch, but, yeah, Drain Punch as well for Terrakion, for Crook, and Registeel, and just to gain back HP as well, and then we have the boy, <clears throat> how Rombe, I brought him week one, I haven't brought him back since then, I initially had Hoopa over the Slow King, because also a Trick Room offensive, three attack offensive Hoopa. I felt like bringing a Trick Room, two offensive attacks, and then Toxic just overall, just for his team, because Toxic can't handle the Blast Toys. Sure, I could have brought in Grass Knot, um, but I just feel more confident with Toxic that way that I can lower down his walls. Um, I can wear them out more, you know? Like, if it's like 1v1, where it's just like uh, the Slow King versus Shin, which that would be suicidal, I can get a Toxic off on it. Sure, I know that has Natural Cure, but I can get a Toxic on it. And essentially me doing that with its Natural Cure, I'm forcing the switch, all right? That's the thing about going for status inflicting moves on these Natural Cure Pokemon, is because regardless if it does seem like a useless play to the uneducated eye, it actually isn't that bad of a play. That's why people go for it on like Chansey, Blissey, uh, Shaman, uh, star me even because of the fact that it forces a switch they're wearing it down and if they need it that much or they need it healthy to a point to handle on the threat example shaman being on the for the bleezes right there and to to take more hits from this version well then yeah you, yeah it, it forces a switch to where then you gain back the momentum by forcing that switch so overall it's not a bad play you know especially more for the blastoise if even because i know who run dark pulse but then like hoopa or like uh, the Slow King, maybe even, you know, just there, just so you can touch Slow King, or else like, you'd be walled by Slow King if you brought Aura Sphere just for Hydreigon, you know? So, like, if you brought, like, Rapid Spin Scald, Ice Beam, Aura Sphere, then he could not touch the Slow King. So, then I could wear it down then, you know? Essentially, I could wear it down then, you know? Sure, it'd be smarter to bring Slack off, but then I would be able to swap out then, you know, play around a bit, play, play, a lot, play around with it a little more, go out to Azumarill on it then, on, like, an Ice Beam or something like that, him trying to maybe freeze me, but I have Scald, so maybe Leo wouldn't do that, I don't know, but. 
play around with it, go out to the, like, either the Zapdos or the, uh, Zumro, just kind of fuck around with it and get off the damage that I need to get off, essentially. So, it's Trick Room just kind of a revenge type of thing since Low King is so slow and a lot of his offensive mons are so fast. That's like Swellow, Zipstrika, uh, Terrakion, Victini, Crook, Shaman's even fast too, Sigilyph. So, this is just, you know, a lot of his fast, a lot of his offensive threats are fast. I can be able to go for the Trick Room and then do hella damage to it with Scald the 2 KO on you, Scald the 2 KO on you, Scald the 2 KO on you, uh, Ice Beam's 2 KO on you. If I'm not mistaken, I actually don't think I've seen the 2 KO on you, but it, it's the fact that it's still super effective that I can get damage off, try an RNG, miss a Seed Flare. <laughs> I feel the pain. Stuff like that, and this is the squad that we're bringing, guys. Take a good look at them because they're going to be fighting probably the most threatening guy at this very given moment in UCL this early on. So, wish us luck. If I lose, it'll be fine because then I'll be 4 and 2, and only two losses this early really isn't that bad. Um, I really isn't that bad. I think to make it to playoffs, you need to have five losses or less. So, it really shouldn't be that bad, you know, having two losses, but I'm pretty confident that I can win, pretty confident that I can get the juice done and do some work. So wish me luck, guys. This is the squad that we're going to be going in with. I am Numb Nexus, coach of the Pitcher Pichus, and I will see you all tomorrow. Even though I'm not even recording this, I'm recording this video like way early on in the week. I'll see you guys tomorrow, because it'll go up Friday uh, for the UCL. Goodbye.